sun my thoughts from afar. I have a reason, and I am with you still. Alleluia, you have laid your hand upon me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fall, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what happened, what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. The right hand of the Lord has struck with A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, 
where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Victime Pascali laudat, Emolent Christiani, Orius redam it ovas, Christus innocent patri, Reconcilia vid peccatoras. Moris ad vita tua lo, Confixere mirando, Nos vitae mortuus regnat vivus, die nobis Maria, vir vidis ti in via, sepulcrum Christi vivantis, et gloria vidare resurtis, angeli postastas, Sudarium ad vestas, Suraxit Christus pas mea, Recerat suos in Galilea, Cibus Christus suraxisse, Amor tuis pere, Tu in nobis victorax, Miserere. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first. 
And he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I want to begin by extending to all of you uh, the warmest of greetings for a very, very happy and beautiful celebration of Easter. Um, the, the restrictions we are under, of course, are preventing us from having the fullest of celebrations, but nothing can restrain our hearts. In gratitude to God and with, the, um, uh, and with disposition of soul that really believes in the resurrection, that believes in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that believes that we are created for heaven, created for love, created for goodness and holiness of life, not only for living it out in this world, but living it out in this world in order um, uh, that we may come to the fullness of fulfillment in the heavenly kingdom. In other words, that there's a continuity of life from, uh, and holiness uh, that corresponds with the nature God gave us and calls us to, to uh, fulfill our potential and to act as people created in the very image and likeness of God. And so um, to reflect that dignity that he has given to us and to uh, live in such a way as to show forth the very firm commitment we have to uh, our joy and excitement at the wondrous news of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus from the dead, which is his victory over sin and death by taking on death himself, entering into death, and dying on the cross as a divine victim and as a, as a high priest offering the sacrifice. Then uh, Jesus conquers sin and death. And in that conquering of sin and death, then there is the revelation and the opening up of the great splendor of victory. This is how God is glorified. It is by overcoming the enemy. It is by uh, uh, vanquishing the enemy and routing the foe and being able to show forth, not by human power, but by God's power, the wondrous things that God can do. As we prayed the Easter Vigil last night, we went through um, salvation history, at least some sampling of the scriptures that chart out sort of the main lines of salvation history and how God gave everything order. And by his command, he brought everything into existence in an ordered way and with great wisdom and with love and goodness. He looked upon all that he made and saw that it was good. And um, it is through sin that death entered the world. And what is sin? It is a rebellious heart. It is the mind and the heart asserting oneself over and against God, as if uh, we can't trust him. And the lesson of our life is that God is trustworthy and that our trust in him and living out of faith, uh, the faith that he has revealed with the positive commandments to do good as well as the commandments of the things to avoid and not do because they are mortal. They're like taking on a terminal condition for the soul. Um, uh, the Lord in his love gives us guidance and shows us how to aspire to that holiness of life. And so in this beautiful Easter season now with the celebration of Easter on this day, we will have of course this octave of Easter, the eight days of sustained celebration that make up one as if it were one sustained day for a period of eight days. And that number eight, uh, representing eternity, that by the Lord's passion, death, and resurrection, he takes us out of time into eternity. And we're brought to the eighth day. And living uh, now in, in uh, a reality that's been changed by virtue of the saving power of the Lord and the saving grace to which he invites all people of every generation. And so uh, we are energized to be able to
put all of the trials and struggles in our daily life and the circumstance that the world is in right now in its proper frame of reference. While things are difficult and there are very difficult, pain th painful things going on, nevertheless, we must put at the top of our list our excitement and joy at recognizing the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and singing the praises of God who has come to our help. And it is this reality that enables us then to be able to get through the trials and troubles of this earthly life. This time of testing a proving ground, a time wherein now is the time to show what kind of metal we're made of in terms of are we disciples to the Lord? And uh, is our faith a trusting faith? Do we embrace all that the Lord teaches? And do we keep his commandments in their integrity? And um, the Lenten season has been about really examining our hearts and, and consciences and rooting out from our life those things that we've made false gods or have allowed to creep in and give us uh, disordered priorities and put God at the top of the list and everything else in its proper place following upon that. In this way, we are brought into the freedom to live as the children of God. We have been rescued from slavery to sin. We have been uh, rescued from the wages of sin, which is death. And we have the promise of everlasting life. And this enables us to overcome all fear. It enables us to overcome the trials and to have a, a disposition of heart that is, takes its consolation and its hope and its joy in God. As I uh, uh, look out to you who are viewing this through live stream, stream or video, I'm looking through the flame of the Christ candle, and I'm looking by this flame uh, into the world, so to speak, to have that vision that comes through the light of Jesus Christ. And with the, that vision and the light of Jesus Christ, everything else, everything now in the whole world, in the whole cosmos, and through the whole span of history has to be seen differently, with clarity, with truth, with sincerity, and with loving obedience to our saving God. And so this is a time wherein we are being prepared and strengthened to be witnesses of the Lord in his resurrection. The great greetings in Latin, resurrexit sicut dixit. Uh, we, we, we pray this in the, the beautiful uh, hymn, uh, the, the Marian Antiphon in the Easter season, the Regina Celi. Huh? And as we pray that, resurrexit sicut dixit, he is risen as he said. Uh, and, and then uh, in, in Greek, um, uh, they, uh, the greeting is uh, Christus anesti, Christus anesti. And the response to that is alitos anesti. That is to say, the Lord is risen. And the response is, uh, Christ is risen. The response is, he is risen indeed. And so um, this is the great affirmation and the assertion that we make and that then changes everything in the world. This is a time of great renewal. You know, the, the reality is there are so many people who think they know what Christianity is, but they do not. What they have witnessed for decades has been uh, so much of a kind of watered down, um, uh, laxist kind of expression uh, of a, a, a culture that is not a well-integrated, authentic expression of Christianity. And it's caused a lot of cynicism and scandal because people say, well, look at those, those Christians, look at those Catholics and see how, you know, they say one thing, but then they don't live it. They don't even try to live it in many cases. And this is a time for the world to be um, uh, reinvigorated and to be amazed and impressed with the power of the Christian faith and the power of God's grace working in the lives of believers who seek to love him and serve him and aspire to heaven 
and to do so also as witnesses helping their neighbors, helping the stranger to come to understand and know the wondrous love of God and to find salvation in the one and only Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, and his holy Catholic Church. And so this Easter season is a very, very powerful time of rejoicing. Our penance of Lent is uh, now behind us. Please, God, we've had great growth, and we've had graces for which we can give thanks that the Lord has sustained us through that time. But now we're at a time of rejoicing and feasting, not to excess, but good feasting, good celebration, and in great gratitude because Jesus Christ is risen, and he wants us to share in his risen life. He wants us to live in such a way that uh, we do not hold back. Uh, rather, we put it all out there because we know he is risen. We're not doubtful. We're, we're not going to have sort of a, a back door way out, a plan B. Our plan is the plan of God. And that is what faith is. That's what the, the, the trusting aspect of faith is. And yet we see so many signs uh, in our life if we're really striving to live the life of faith, if we're really praying, if we're really uh, loving God and our hearts and souls are directed to him, then um, we, we uh, are, are able to uh, know with conviction of God's, how wonderful God's goodness is. And to bring us to generosity, to move us out of a posture wherein we're overly cautious and we self-protect and we become stingy and restrained and we kind of hide out. The Lord is calling us out of hiding. And this Easter season is a time of really preparing us and strengthening us to be renewed then ultimately in the Pentecost event that will happen in 50 days where the apostles are strengthened to burst out of that upper room, the locked doors of the upper room, and, and go out into the streets and proclaim Jesus Christ crucified and risen from the dead. Let us do that. Let us be courageous. Let us be generous with God and with one another. And in so doing, we will never, never uh, experience the well running dry. We will always be renewed and replenished by God's goodness and his grace. And so, uh, as we celebrate this Easter, I, I want you to know that I'm praying for all of you. I miss our parish family and our friends. Um, I miss seeing you and, and praying together physically with you, but at least we have this technology uh, that, <laughs> when it works, that enables us to be able to um, be in a communication about these things, and you're able to see here in your church uh, the Mass being celebrated. And uh, with the small number of people who are helping me here, we're putting forth our heartfelt efforts to serve the Lord and to serve you. And so we, we, uh, I want you to know that you are in my intentions, your families, your friends, your, and also your struggles, your sorrows, your difficulties, and your hopes and your aspirations. But today in a special way to say thank you to the Lord and to pour out our hearts in love and gratitude to him, gratitude to him in such a way as to make us more generous in his service. And so God bless you and happy Easter. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. I'm going to ask that uh, for the um, liturgy of the Eucharist that we um, uh, sing the parts for the uh, Misa de Angelis. Okay? Thank you very much. Today we have the option of uh, praying the creed or of 
renewing our baptismal promises. And so we're going to renew our baptismal promises, and then I will uh, conduct the sprinkling um, uh, with holy water. Uh, and we will chant the Vidi Aquam during that uh, sprinkling. Dear brethren, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, under, uh, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> By his resurrection, Jesus Christ has conquered all that stands between us and God. We therefore approach the Father now with great confidence that all church leaders will be renewed in their mission of leading all people to Jesus, the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. For a deeper unity among all Christians as they acknowledge together and proclaim to the world the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord, Lord that the risen Christ may bless, guide, and protect all who serve in public office. We pray to the Lord, Lord that Jesus, who conquered the power of death, may give our society the strength to eliminate the evils of abortion, assisted suicide, and capital punishment, and all things that militate against the dignity and sanctity of human life. We pray to the Lord that the sick may be comforted and healed for God's help for those who are health care workers and those who are serving the common good and putting themselves in harm's way and for all the souls in purgatory. May they be brought to share in the resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Father, you have already granted us more than we can ask for in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As you answer our prayers, make us ever more faithful to him who is Lord forever and ever. renowned in Judah, 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to our Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restore our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Most merciful Father, <clears throat> we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, his assisting Bishop George, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith, remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate especially the glorious ever virgin Mary mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph her spouse your blessed apostles and martyrs Peter and Paul Andrew James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, 
Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Gloria tam tuam, annunciamus Domine. Quid tuam resurrectionem confitamur, Domine. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, 
and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into, your, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipso, her in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitati spiritus sancti. Omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicur in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hod ye, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicur et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas en tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Son, 
let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Friends, I want to wish all of you once again a very, very happy and blessed Easter and Easter season. Um, we have um, uh, so much to be grateful for and so much to celebrate. Of course, we have much for which to pray and many needs. The, the, there, there is still the call to conversion or repentance in this world that is so much needed. Um, not, you know, the problem is that people oftentimes take it as being dour and negative. It's actually very positive call people to repentance and conversion when, did it, when done in a true Christian spirit because it's full of hope and, and makes a passage from uh, the domain of death, the realm of death and sin to the realm of life and joy. And so let us be joyful in these beautiful things. Uh, keep staying um, uh, up with uh, our Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel uh, to get the various videos of liturgies and different devotions and so forth. But also, uh, every once in a while, I give explanatory things of different kinds, updates on things going in the parish. And um, I want to start doing a little series of small explanation of various elements in the church and uh, around the altar, etc., cetera, um, that can just give some additional formation and insight to see all, how all of this works together in a beautiful economy of faith and hope and charity. Um, also, if you have not been getting our emails uh, from the parish, please uh, email the church office at info at acchtx.org uh, and ask to be added to the email list. We'd like everybody to be on that list so that if there are any new developments, we can get the word out to you very quickly and very effectively. Um, additionally, our parish website is a good place to visit on a regular basis so as to, again, get updates and additional information and opportunities to celebrate these great gifts of God. I ask you please to continue, if at all possible, continue to help supporting the parish. You can do so online, electronic giving. Just go to our parish website, acchtx.org, and uh, see the opportunities there for giving. You can set up for regular contributions, which would be most helpful uh, to us uh, and to enable us to continue uh, to do the things that are, are so important that are ongoing works of the church. Um, and let us continue to pray for each other. That is so important. I miss gathering together with you, and I very much look forward to the day when all of these restrictions are lifted and we can come together uh, freely and in the embrace of uh, charity and our common faith. So with that now uh, for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth the masses and it hallelujah. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Dios. Te doy gracias.